We have a load of new information on what is coming to Modern Warfare 3 Zombies in Season 3 and seemingly Season 4 too. Now with the Season 3 launch of course there is literally nothing for Zombies yet again and we have to wait for the mid-season update and we have new information on that and Season 3 Reloaded is actually going to be on May 1st, so very very close to be honest. All of these seasons are very short because Gulf War of course has an earlier release date at the end of October, they're still trying to cram in those 6 seasons. And I feel like Season 6 just won't see any content at all for Modern Warfare Zombies because Gulf War Zombies is going to be releasing at the end of October. It gives them such a short window and especially if there is early access for Gulf War Zombies like is rumoured, it gives an even shorter window so there may just be no content at all for that and Season 5 may be that final one. However, I do think the Season 5 cutscene will be very important to teasing Gulf War Zombies so it might be part of the marketing for that. It's probably going to have some huge story revelations that may be important for that game in COD 2025 as well. However, the big thing is of course Trek have finally confirms that they are off the project and they have said that they are just focusing on their next big surprise which is obviously COD 2024 Gulf War Zombies and they have said that Sledgehammer Games have taken over development and will be overseeing the rest of the seasons as the main developer. However obviously this happened months ago probably after season 1. This is not something that has only just happened. They've just unveiled this now and made it seem like this is new information when we all know it happened before. Now we had leaks and rumours that were saying that other studios have taken over as the main developers, such as High Moon Studios, Raven Software, and Infinity Ward. And whilst those studios are probably still helping or assisting with the project, it does seem like Sledgehammer are the ones in charge. Now, Sledgehammer have actually been doing a really good job with supporting Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer, despite the fact that, of course, this game was made in such a short period of time. It was meant to be an expansion for the game. They wanted to do an Advanced Warfare 2, but they were given the short end of the stick. But they are doing the best with what they can, so I'm hoping with that in mind, they can manage to release some pretty decent updates for the rest of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, but honestly, I'm not really expecting much. Whilst they have been supporting multiplayer well, Zombies just requires a lot more development, and even given their absolute best, they probably can't really do much. Most likely, what's the case is that they have all of these beautiful cutscenes for Modern Warfare 3 Zombies at the end of each story mission, and honestly, I really like them, but these are big budget cutscenes, which is unfortunate that we've gotten them in this game, and we didn't get such beautiful cutscenes for the end of the Ether story, which most people cared about. Nevertheless, these cutscenes are interesting, but most likely they costed a lot of money and like I said they were probably all made before the game released so most likely Sledgehammer will be just finishing up content to ensure that there's content to work around these cutscenes which is why we're just getting repetitive missions in the Dark Aether every season and that's pretty much it. They're just trying to scrape together what they can to ensure that we still get the storyline told to us even if it is very repetitive. However in the files of the game they have found that season 4 apparently does not have a cutscene and neither does season 6, which means that there's going to be a gap in season 4 and it seems like we'll get the final cutscene in season 5, meaning that there will be 6 cutscenes in total, with the 3 acts that we had at launch, the season 1 one, the season 2 one, the season 3 one, and then finally the season 5 one. Now what this means is that I think in season 4 is when they are going to release the PvP mode for the game, so that there's at least some content in that gap because it's been rumoured for a while now that a PvP mode would be coming to the game. And every single season and update, the files for the PvP mode have been getting updated, suggesting that it isn't cancelled and it is still coming. Now honestly, I've been of the mind that this is probably cancelled and it's probably not going to release. However, now that we have this information that there's no story mission planned in Season 4, it makes sense that this is when the PvP mode would release, so that there's some content in that season. But honestly, I don't really care about PvP mode at all, I don't understand what's the point Point of them adding it. If you want PvP, you can just play the original DMZ. This just seems like an effort to try and bring DMZ fans back in. And speaking of DMZ, Charlie Intel have confirmed the reason it was discontinued was because Infinity Ward, of course, moved on to working on their next game, Modern Warfare 4 or whatever it is, releasing in 2026, and they don't have any studio that can support it. Now, yes, the development time that went into Modern Warfare Zombies could have gone into DMZ, but I prefer Modern Warfare Zombies to DMZ just on the premise that it's zombies, which is just such a more interesting AI type to fight, and it also has more interesting interesting storyline and locales and atmosphere. So yeah, DMZ fans, I guess you may enjoy that they might be adding a PvP mode again. This is just from the files of the game, so it's not confirmed, and it could be scrapped, but the reason why I think it's probably coming in Season 4 is apparently it's going to work just like a story mission. It's not going to be a separate mode, it's going to be within the main Modern Warfare Zombies mode, however, it's going to be something optional that you can then exfil to, as apparently it's going to be a map event, just like these story missions, you'll be able to go up to some sort of portal or something that will then enable PvP. 
key, and it's going to be a deadbolt recon mission. So this is something you can do entirely by choice. Now, I wonder when you activate this, is it a map vote for everyone on your team, similar to the story missions? Will it bring everyone in the lobby into it? I assume not. I assume it's just going to be for your team, and it'll bring you into a new lobby with new people that have also similarly voted for it. So it seems like prior to going into PvP, you can prepare on the main map before going into it. So yeah, I think it will be semi-fun. It's basically just going to be the regular Modern Warfare Zombies mode, just with PvP enabled. I'm glad that it is going to be a separate mode, although you won't, it seems, be able to select it from the menu. It's going to be something you have to, you know, go to in the game itself. But it does seem like it's going to be pretty much just like the regular mode. Apparently, there's going to be normal zombie bounties. There's going to be PvP-specific bounties, such as hunting other squads. There's going to be a recon point that can be acquired, allowing you to respawn. There's going to be team reassigning slash merging, just like was in DMZ. There's going to be a respawning system, and there's also going to be weapon cases, so you'll be able to do things to get special loot on the map, such as calling cards, stickers, blueprints, and you will have to extract with them to obtain them. So yeah, it's basically just DMZ with zombies. Honestly though, considering the fact that they have such limited development for this game, I wish they put all of that attention into just making the proper mode good. Why are they working on a PvP mode that pretty much no one really wants? DMZ fans just want to see DMZ supported, they don't really want this. Modern Warfare Zombies fans don't want to fight other players, so no one wants this, so I don't really know why they are adding it. Like I said, it could be cancelled, but it just seems like a waste of development time to me. Now, we're not sure what the teams are going to be within PvP. Is it just going to be Deadbolt versus Terminus Outcomes? Are there going to be different factions, such as Shadow Company and others? It's a bit unclear right now as to how it will make sense story-wise. Now, if you want to where Treg did have a creator call, which is where they announced that they were stepping off of the project and Sledgehammer would be taking over, so in any future creator calls, it'll likely be Sledgehammer that they're speaking to instead of people from Treg. Apparently, Kevin Drew was the one announcing this, but he is now working on Gulf War Zombies, so I just hope that game is good. However, they did announce two big things that are coming to Modern Warfare Zombies in the future. These will likely come in Season 3 Reloaded, is that they are going to be doubling the stash limit, so you're now going to have 20 stash out of game instead of 10, and I don't understand why they didn't do this sooner. This should have been done a month after the game released, especially once they added more schematics, but honestly, 20 is still not enough. It needs to be at least 30, and I think there should be different categories for different types of schematics as well, so you can have different amounts of each different tier depending on how good they are. 20 is just not enough, but this is better than nothing, but it does feel like too little too late, and like I said, this should have been done ages ago. I really don't know why they weren't listening to feedback there. And the other thing that they're going to be doing is they are going to be allowing you to reduce your schematics cooldown as you exfil with Essence in the game. Essence so far, exfilling has been useless really just for XP, so this gives some sort of use to it and allows you to reduce your schematics. We're unsure how much we're going to be able to reduce them by depending on how much Essence you have, and it means that you're not really going to be able to spend it much in your game. You might want to be reserved just building up Essence to reduce the cooldown. It's kind of annoying though, I don't really like the exfil aspect of Modern Warfare Zombies having to prepare for future games. Nevertheless though, this is good. Now there is a bank slash a wallet system that's been found in the files for literally ages and was in DMZ as well, so I hope that they add it alongside this new system so you can bring Essence into future games, but it's unclear that could be cut. And when Season 3 dropped, this was actually kind of glitched in the game, it was appearing in people's games, but this was just a visual glitch, so we are having to wait for Season 3 Reloaded for it. Now within Season 3 Reloaded itself, of course, we're getting a new story mission, which is obvious, and the new Dark Aether section is going to be Zakwa Hydroelectric from Almazra. Nothing crazy there, although it does seem like it's literally on an asteroid because you can see what seems to be the Earth in the distance on the teaser image of the schematics, which is all going to be based around the fact that Dr. Ava Jansen has been lured into the Dark Aether by the Entity, which is likely a mirrored version, a Dark Aether version of herself. And apparently in this mission, we're going to fight the Entity itself, or at least confront it and be face to face to it, and apparently this mission is going to involve a champion, a different version of a disciple, but it could just be that the entity is basically just a reskin disciple that's stronger. So yeah, we'll most likely confront the entity, maybe it's revealed that it is a split version of Dr. Ava Jansen, and we're going to be left with some sort of cliffhanger within this cutscene, which I'm excited for. Maybe we're going to successfully rescue Ava, or maybe she's going to merge with the entity to form some sort of stronger boss, and maybe that's who we then fight in Season 5. Now, of course, there's going to be a little Easter egg quest to re-enter the Dark Aether within this rift, and the items you collect with it are apparently these Dark Aether artifacts that grant powers that might work like perma perks. It's been rumored in the files of the game that one will apparently allow you to run faster, like stamina up, so maybe if you have both, you can be super fast. One will apparently allow you to deal more damage to zombies. One will apparently give you something called a zombie vision. It might be like death perception. And there's apparently going to be one that will allow you to reload faster. And it's interesting because according to Alika Alix, he said death perception is 
is going to be used within this new rift, or at least the quest to get the items. So maybe you'll use this one to get the one that gives you this zombie vision, but we already have death perception, so how is it going to differ from that? I'm interested to see how that works. And it does seem like all of these items will be obtained within the Dark Aether, and the items themselves, according to this creator call from Treyarch, are going to be a zombie head, a zombie arm, and a zombie foot, and apparently they're easy to obtain, you can't really miss them, so maybe, like I said, death perception will allow you to see these items within the Dark Aether, making it very easy to find. So this could be a much easier quest than before, of course, we may then have to go outside of the Dark Aether to upgrade them, or stay within the Dark Aether. And yeah, these zombie parts will give you different abilities, so I'm guessing the zombie foot will be the one that allows you to, of course, run faster, the zombie head will probably give you the zombie vision, and the zombie arm will allow you to reload faster. And we only have three, but it would make sense that there would be four, so we're unsure if there's going to be a fourth one, maybe to, for example, deal more health. But that's really weird, because are they going to physically attach onto your body? That would be kind of creepy, but I guess a cool aesthetic. And they may just literally function just like the different masks that we had on Revelations and other zombies maps in Black Ops 3, giving you basically perma perks, because, you know, on Revelations, you could get a Juggernog one, for example, a purple Juggernog, and still have regular Juggernog. So it might work like that, where you can get perks, and they can stack, and you might be super overpowered with all of these. So I'm really excited for these. It's going to really change up the formula of Modern Warfare Zombies. It's going to make you very overpowered, it seems. Now, of course, we're getting three new schematics as well in Season 3, Reloaded. One is Deadwire Detonators. Now, in my video before, I said that this is kind of pointless, because we can already put Deadwire on explosive weapons, but apparently this will allow you to put Deadwire on grenades, monkey bombs, equipment, other things like that as well. But again, it kind of seems like a pretty pointless schematic, especially considering there's much better ones in the game. So I'm not really sure about this one. And of course, all these schematics are unlocked via the new Elder Sigil that'll be coming with the new Rift. We then also have the Golden Mask Filter, will allow your mask to regenerate when you are not within the gas itself. And the Sergeant's Berets will give you a friendly Merc. Now, of course, we already have a friendly dog, and there's a schematic for that in the game, so it kind of works similar to that. It does seem like this one is a bit better, though. You'll get a friendly Merc, and just like the dog, it'll be able to revive you, and it'll protect you with its gunfire. But not only that, the Barret hat will also make you immune and invisible to other mercs. So for those who absolutely hate getting shot at, this is so useful. So yeah, honestly, after these new schematics are added, and especially these perma perks that are coming, these essentially dark ether powers, these zombie powers, the game is probably going to be a lot easier. The stash definitely needs a massive increase, though. Now, the final thing coming in Season 3 Reloaded, assuming there are no other surprises, which there very much could be, is of course the new Barret Warlord, which is Rainmaker. He will shoot artillery at players and has a secret card up his sleeve when he is actually confronted, but warlords are kind of pointless in this game, to be honest, and this is going to be located on the island, compound within his lair by Shahin Manor across the water. Nothing too special there, unfortunately. And that's all we know coming in Season 3 Reloaded for Zombies. However, there is something else Zombies-related, but it's actually going to be in Warzone and not Zombies itself, because as you know, Bunker 5 opened in Urzikstan in Season 2, and it contained zombies being experimented on in canisters. We're not sure how this ties into the storyline and the lore, but with Season 3, they've closed this bunker now. However, we know in Season 3 Reloaded, they're going to be opening up all of the bunkers on the map, so we're not sure what Easter eggs will be in them. Are they all going to be containing zombies? This will likely be very cool, though, and I assume it's probably going to tie into marketing for Gulf War Zombies and teasers and hype for that. But again, I don't know how this ties into storyline-wise. Maybe it's got something to do with the PvP mode that's going to be coming. There is going to be a Mindless skin coming to the game as well, which is wild, considering we still don't even have, for example, a Ravenov operator. It is also rumoured in the files of the game that a Zombies mode is going to be coming to Rebirth Island in Warzone. So, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're getting Rebirth or Fortune's Keep for Zombies. So, so sad. Now, we don't know anything about this. It could just be Zombies Royale again, because we did have Rebirth of the Dead back in the day. I, I think we've actually had it twice now. So, it could literally just be that again. Again, I don't know how that'll tie in storyline-wise, but if there's zombie bunkers on Urzikstan, maybe there's also zombies making their way over to Rebirth, either from Urzikstan, or maybe there's bunkers underneath there as well that Connie might be keeping. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to say in this video. Let me know all of your thoughts, as always, in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching, and uh, bye.